Welcome to an unusual and very cool challenge lock that I got from one of my German viewers. That's how it looks like. It's an Abus Euro cylinder built into this little red house. Yeah, it's a tricky pick. Um, I spent quite some time with this lock already. Got it open a couple of times, but I have to say there are some pretty nasty tricks inside. Either you don't get it open at all, or <laughs> You pick it and then it turns only a bit under 90 degree. Yeah, uh, but I think meanwhile I figured out approximately what's going on. Might be some check pin in the very bottom here and might be a, a spool with a very sharp uh, head, a very thin head that gets trapped in the in a groove in the plug so that the plug does only turn uh, a bit under 90 degrees. But this is pure speculation. I have to pick it open and then we will open it up and look inside. By the way, it comes with a note from the owner of this lock, Hilti Home. It says, I am not a locksmith nor a lock picker, but a German thinker. Having watched many videos about challenge locks I asked myself how to make it better so I built my first challenge locks and added a counter measure that I haven't seen before. So let's see how this lock gets picked open and then we will look inside. Stay tuned. So here's this little red house clamped in a vise and that's the key still mummied but we can already see a little bit of the shape. Pretty cool head. Hmm. So let's see. All the pins are free. I use a Peterson pry bar to tension the lock at the pin side, turn it to the right. Ah, I turn it to the left first so you can see the check pin. So, check this out. There's something in the back. If you engage it or if you push it down, the plug turns a little bit. So, with turning it to the left, it binds first, or so the check pin binds first, but had no luck yet to pick it open to the left, so I turn it to the right and we have to take care for the check pin a little bit later. All right, let's get started. Okay, I release tension again. Yeah, two came back. And got a nice, ah, oh no, it's caught at 90 degree or, oh. Now it's back in <laughs> in the original state. Okay, all right, here's another attempt after my initial failure. Let's see. Pay attention to the right and yeah, three or four is binding. Okay, got it set. Felt like a serrated and whatever there is in the back is feels really strange. I think there's not only this check pin or check pin mechanism, but maybe something else. So let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay, two came back. A bit movement on the plug. Another movement there. Let's see if the check pin. Yeah, and the check pin was the last bit to um, to um, yeah to deal with, and the lock opened. I was advised not to turn it um, 360 degrees. So I even stop here at quickly or shortly before 180 degrees and now let's see what's inside. I have now the legitimation to uh, gut it. There uh, come, it comes with gutting instructions. Let's break the seal. Whoa, that's a lot of things to uh, keep in mind. So I will first uh, 
Maybe grab a pinning tray, how about that? So I used the big one. Maybe there are some parts to to um, to organize. Okay, first I will unscrew the slotted screw on the back. Okay, here we go. So now I would say the cylinder should slide out. Yeah, it says to release the cylinder. Okay, that was easy. Now the cylinder is out. Oh, that looks weird. There's something going on here. What does it say? Pull the splint on the back side of the cylinder to make the spring flying. Okay, that's the splint. So I will pull it. And I will let the spring flying. Oh, maybe not. Try to get it out. Why is there... Maybe I lock it back up. So which way should I turn it? Turn it around this way. Yeah. Okay. So how does this work? Uh, that looks very complicated. Ah, there is another splint to pull. And now there is this spring. Okay. Okay, I got this. Then bend the retaining ring and remove it. Keep it. Okay, so I bent this ring here and keep it. All right. And now um, unscrew the set screws to remove the springs and the driver pins. Okay. Here we go, we have some set screws and we have some color-coded uh, pin sticks. I have to get my um, Allen wrench. Oh, on the first try. All right, so um, unscrew the set screws to remove the springs and the driver pins. I start with uh, one. Okay, no idea why this does not come out. So I will use a shim and a follower. So here we go. Here we have the follower and the shim. Now let's see. Okay, let's look at the plug first, maybe. Okay, we have some really weird stuff going on. Heavily modified plug. Yeah, here you can see the, the slot that I was thinking of. But I wonder why this is not going down. Ah, it's going up, okay. It's a two-part pin. Or it's... Um, Ah, that's that's the that's the key pin, and that's a little wafer. And if this wafer somehow gets caught in here, oh no, maybe no, it has to do with the driver pin. Uh, here, here is the driver pin. Huh. Not sure why this 
Uh, let, let me think for a second. But here we have the plug, heavily modified. Weird stuff going on. All right, let's see what's what's in here. If there is another magic in here. No magic anymore. Ah, we have threading going on going on all the way through in number two and maybe in number four as well. So that's the type of modification you have here in the in the housing. Now let's look at the at the at the pins. Here we have keeping with a slight serration but a very nicely serrated driver in number one. We have a key pin that's made out of a heavily serrated driver plus a barbarian serrated or double serrated driver. We have a spool in three with a uh, key pin with a deep serration. Then we have uh, another key pin with a slight serration and a heavily double serrated driver in four and five is the is a uh, almost usual key pin with slight serration and this uh, this combination here um, of key pin and so this 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 keep this this driver pin with a with a sharp tip and this uh, wafer. So as I said, I think um, I felt something like a check pin that needs to be triggered and this mechanism here that prevents the plug from turning more than 90 degree um, if you haven't pushed the the stack number five all the way up it needs. Let me think how this all works and maybe it has something to do with the spring or so and then I'll be back hopefully with an explanation. All right, both mysteries are solved. The springy check pin mechanism and the rotation limitation mechanism. Let's start with the rotation limitation mechanism. First goes in the key pin here in number five and then on top we have the wafer and the driver pin looks like this. Now imagine you pick this pin stack and you pick it so that the driver only clears the shear line then it rides in the groove and it stops there. You have no uh, chance to push this driver further out of this groove and it's um, not tapered, it's it's straight so it stops there or if you pick it the other way around it stops here and um, then game over. But if you pick it a little bit further, let's do this, if you pick it a little bit further the wafer comes out and the wafer then can slide over this groove so it's wide enough or the diameter is large enough to slide over this groove. On top of that you would have the T-pin here and everything's good so then you can um, open up uh, the lock. Okay, for showing you the the rotation limitation we have to reassemble the lock partially because this has to do with this little slot here in the back. So let's put this back together without the key pins. Uh, first we have this little rod that goes in there like this and now you can imagine you might start to understand how this works because of this you cannot turn the the plug you first would need to push this out of the way and that it works so nicely um, we have to put in a spring on top and then there is this little needle here that needs to be 
pushed in. Not sure if I can do this here easily on camera because this is a little bit fiddly. I think this might be sufficient for demonstrational purposes. Um, this usually is tilted um, and it's flush but it's very fiddly so I leave it like this. You can imagine that um, now the plug cannot turn and by the way I have um, already revealed the uh, key looks like this. Um, yeah you can imagine that the plug won't turn because of this rod here blocking in the in the little groove but now if you insert the key you can use the tip of the key to push out of the way this little rod and then the plug can turn. Of course you can also use a pick uh, to push this out of the way. Pretty cool mechanism that I have not yet seen so far. Very ingenious. Yeah, pretty pretty cool lock uh, with two nasty security features. Hilti Home, thank you very much for sending this lock to me, for making it. As I said, I'm really impressed. Um, it was a great fun for me to uh, play with this lock, to explore its secrets. Now I hope I can get it back together, I put it back to back, <laughs> put it back together and send it back to you. Yeah, thanks again for the luck uh, to Hilti Home and everybody else. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy picking and bye bye.